Hello, you're listening to Times Art Center Berlin's interview with Nikita Intianzai, the chief curator at Guangdong Times Museum and the curator of our current exhibition, Zhou Tao, Winter North, Summer South. As we all know, the past couple of months have been extraordinary and unprecedented for many people in the world, including the art world. Can you first tell us a bit about your own experience and the situation at the Times Museum in Guangzhou? I actually was in Vancouver when the, the outbreak happened in China. And following the news and post from social media, uh, it was very depressing. <laughs> also, I was actually staying with my family, which uh, is in a suburban but white neighborhood of Vancouver. At that time, the news about the coronavirus in China was just like one news per day, and people were totally not alert of the situation. But I felt almost like living, uh, like very alone uh, in the middle of uh, the suburban neighborhood. But after we all returned in early February, I felt a lot calmer when witnessing there hasn't been much panic in Guangzhou. And people actually really follow instruction to stay home. And we can also order food from uh, delivery. So that was like really to uh, stay indoor, quarantine, and wait until the kind of peak of the outbreak uh, fell in the end. And now we all go back slowly uh, to work. And we are really happy to see each other in the museum after such uh, long period of like staying at home for almost two months. But we still follow a very strict ritual of checking our temperature three times a day, sanitizing hands and also, all of this is implemented uh, at every public spots and public spaces. Just uh, for our audience who have not been to China and who are not familiar with the geography of Guangzhou, can you tell us a bit where is Guangzhou located and what kind of city it is in China? Okay, actually Guangzhou is like at the southern part of China, one of the most populated and there is a very big uh, what we call migrant worker population. So when the outbreak happened, it was during the Chinese New Year. So the city had uh, a big population uh, living the city, uh, like living, going back to hometown. So, but Guangzhou so far until now have less than 400 uh, patients. After such a huge breakout in Wuhan and Hubei province. So I will say for uh, a big, city people have done quite a good job uh, following instructions and also keeping us and our loved ones safe and well so yeah. so far in the past few days uh, the german government has also been very strongly advising people to stay home as much as possible so when you mention the situation in guangzhou for you and your colleagues to really stay home and following uh, the advice to do self-isolation mm -hmm. was it really hard for you guys because you work in a cultural institute that you are usually used to having exhibitions open have receiving public audience so how were you able to carry on your work during this two months of a quarantine um it's interesting that because china became kind of like the outbreak spot of the virus so instantly i was receiving a lot less invitation <laughs> <laughs> also a lot less email because uh, people stop inviting us going somewhere and actually the holiday felt a little bit like a longer uh, Chinese New Year holiday I, I have family so for me I actually enjoy spending a bit more time with my son uh, and my family and I think for people who actually are really alone, it might be a little bit difficult. I, we also create a different way of entertainment. Like uh, I know people join concerts online, create party, <laughs> cloud party, that's what we call. So we do manage. It wasn't that difficult as long as I think the critical point is no shortage of uh, food supply and also 
but the, I think it's more psychologically was difficult for for everyone because when you witness such growth of like more number uh, more people are infected, you really feel like oh what when are we going to see like less patients? When is this going to stop? I guess this is what people now feel in Europe and also in in the U.S. Yeah, absolutely. So um, here in Berlin, for example, what we're experiencing is sort of a delayed ripple effect in the sense that, of course, mm. Times Art Center Berlin is a Chinese-run institution. So since early January, like we have been quite alert and deeply concerned of the situation in China. But for quite a few weeks, it it was actually hard for us to communicate this feeling towards you know audience or some people we work with because mm. for a lot of people in berlin they still feel that oh china is far away you know yeah. then of course at the time we were also preparing for Zhou Tao's exhibition winter north uh summer south curated by you and it was indeed very sad for us to find out that actually we were not in the position to invite neither the artist nor the curator to come join us uh, doing this work together. But how was it for you personally just to find out that you, you had to work remotely with the team in Berlin? Did you feel compromised under the circumstances? Actually, I didn't find it, I didn't find it difficult to work with you guys uh, remotely because we had worked Closely as a team before for the exhibition I co-curated with Xiao Yu last year uh, in September, and everyone is like very professional. <laughs> I mean, to talk about compromise, I also probably think I've been thinking a lot about the kind of lifestyle we are so used to as people working in the arts um, that we we consider like constant traveling as a norm, but in reality, um, the pandemic is almost like a, a alarm to remind us uh, this way of production and circulation and free flow of bodies and things might not be possible. And we can actually uh, think of other ways of working and collaborating. So for also Joe Tao's uh, exhibition this time is kind of feature his most recent projects commissioned by Times Museum in 2019. And this, I think the exhibition aims at providing a durational experience so the audience can focus uh, in finish watching this long film. Working from afar is not really a problem because we didn't really aim at fancy production for the show. It's more like uh, introducing the artist's practice to Berlin's audience who might not be familiar with his uh, previous works. And I think uh, it was also doing the Berlin now. Um, I was curious, actually, were there a more international audience um, that were visiting Berlin during that time? Yeah, so it was a nice moment right after Joe Tao's show was opened in mid-February, then it was followed by the Berlinale. And actually during the first few weeks of the exhibition, the space was quite busy constantly. Uh, so it was normal, you know, on a Saturday we would receive 90 or nearly 100 visitors. And I think there were also quite a few reoccurring audience. Um, they had been to the last group show, uh, neither Black, Red, Yellow, nor Woman, that you co-curated with Xiao Yu. And it was kind of a refreshing experience for them to see exactly the same space, but featuring an artist solo show and uh, with much less works. And uh, the, the space mm. is sort of reconfigured and the atmosphere in the space was very different. What I thought was really interesting about Zhou Tao's show is also because the theme features ideas such as topography and geography. And since earlier you were also talking about how the art world functions nowadays, it does seem still relevant, you know, to to this exhibition. So for audience who are not necessarily familiar with Jota's work, if you are in the space now giving a tour, you know, how would you describe him as an artist? 
as an art, it's actually Zhou Tao has a very unique way of working. And I mean, he works alone. Usually, he does not work with a coup. But his film, you can see, is extremely ambitious. And he also does not make a timeline or a short list uh, to shoot a video or a film. But he really managed to represent or document the, the amazing landscapes, which are actually located in Gobi Desert in northwest China. He spent almost like two years in preparing, shooting, and editing the film. And he tends to spend like quite long time, some three months and to even longer in one place to wait for the emergence of his subject matter and explore the potential locations uh, that might be interesting for his film. And, and another thing is like I drew reference to Frederick Jameson's concept of allegory so uh, audience who might not be familiar with Chinese uh, poetic rhetoric, what I call Tonggan or Yi Jue, can understand the critical potential of Zhou Tao's aesthetic and practice. So Tonggan and Yi Jue means like swap senses, such as using smell to designate color or using sound to designate visual image. It's a critique of the binary division between subject and objects. And it's at the core, I think, this kind of binary dialectics is at the core of European modern humanism. So Zhou Tao really embodies such a transdualistic cosmology in his way of producing the film and in his also cinematography of delivering a very unique uh, tactile of sensitivity. What we do, um, I think, um, a bit different in time Sa Center Berlin because the space, it's is much smaller compared with Times Museum in Guangzhou. So instead of presenting a solo survey of maybe uh, most of his major works, we only feature one long film and the kind of still frames that he shot during the time he was uh, making the film in uh, the Gobi Desert. Uh, this series of um, High resolution exhibited in Berlin. Actually, we didn't show that in Guangzhou. So even myself have not managed to see the actual work. So I'm actually jealous. I would like, really like to see these uh, amazing images um, in front of my eyes. Yeah, so we are very lucky to see those um, prints, you know, and mm -hmm. those images do provoke a sense of meditation and uh, it mm -hmm. sort of takes the audience to somewhere else. Because some of the reoccurring questions from many of our audience are, you know, where are those places? You know, what kind of structure mm -hmm. is this? And why are there two uh, floral sculptures in the middle of the desert? So I find it quite mm -hmm. amazing, even though a lot of those images, they look quite minimal at first glance, but actually it provokes very deep senses and the audience do respond to that. Just to give our audience a little bit background information, because in early 2019, you did curate Zhou Tao solo show at the Times Museum. And just now you mentioned that Times Museum is at least twice the size of Times Art Center Berlin. So what other works did you show in that exhibition? Um, actually, we show some of Zhou Tao's earlier performances that he created during his residency in New York. At that time, his body, I mean, the artist's body was still pretty present in this video that documents um, the performance that he carried out in usually public spaces such as like streets in New York and also streets in Guangzhou. And some of these earlier works um, had a feeling of maybe documentary rather than really constructing kind of narrative uh, about a certain landscape. Yeah, uh, or, or maybe just some overall impression. You know, like, do, mm. do you feel like for Berlin audience who didn't get a chance to see his show in mm. Guangzhou, do you feel like they missed out? Or you think it's okay, they're just 
watching this new body of work from Zhou Tao in Berlin? Well, but it's more or less the artist's decision to um, show only his recent work. And I think because Zhou Tao is recognized as a mid-career artist in China, so he's really um, at the point of he really want to experiment with a different way of working or aesthetics. For his kind of uh, introduction to the Berlin art scene, he thinks it's probably more relevant to let people know what his uh, recent interest is rather than giving a kind of survey of his uh, previous works. I think it makes sense because uh, he's still quite young. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. The works we're presenting in this show, uh, a lot of them they have to do with his motif of the infrastructural landscapes, uh, Ji Jian mm-hmm. Shan Shui. Mm-hmm. Do you, would you like to elaborate a bit on that? You know, also including giving some background information to an audience who have not been to China. What does it really imply in terms of how Zhou Tao deals with this topic? I think Zhou Tao also think of this kind of lens. I mean, infrastructure as a kind of landscape, which have been. Uh, classical motif in Chinese painting but this kind of landscape is not like does not mean it's only nature it's a correlation between human and nature like human is always part of the constitutive element of such landscape and he also recognized these people's agency and finding leisurement in almost an impossible kind of wasteland I would say it it's, um, reflects um, the Chinese cosmology of balance between nature and human rather than a kind of uh, division or dualism between uh, nature and human. No, I, I think that's absolutely a very crucial point that you just brought up, uh, this balance mm. between nature and human, which also, of course, seems very relevant to some of the more urgent topics in the world today. I also wanted to touch upon another very important idea, Liu Bai. Would you like to introduce a bit, you know, how this uh, traditional Chinese artistic conception has inspired Zhou Tao's practice and how we should interpret this? Liu Bai was actually a very um, a, a signature of Yuan literary painting. And at that time, Chinese intellectuals, they were kind of in exile because uh, um, Mongolian Empire took over. Um, so a lot of this intellectual recite, uh, recede to painting to express their spiritual world. So Liu Bai practically means when you are framing or making a composition of a certain landscape, you push the subject or uh, what we can say like human uh, to the side of the painting. So we'll see a lot of empty space on a painting. And Zhou Tao sometimes did some, he does something similar when he's uh, framing his phone. Um, and he will put the horizon extremely low, uh, which is not very usual. And he also delivers some really, really long shots. Um, so people can have a different feeling and perception of the texture of the images. Thank you so much, Nikita, for walking us through the exhibition virtually. Let's finally get back to the Berlin art scene. At the moment, as everyone's facing a great uncertainty, uh, many also hope that in light of the global emergency that doesn't discriminate race, class, and gender, in other words, we're all in this together, uh, cultural institutions and workers will be rethinking some of the more fundamental and crucial aspects of research, productions, and exhibitions. Regarding that, do you have any thoughts that you'd like to share with the Berlin audience? We really have to recognize our privileged fluidity, which heavily relies on globalization, especially the art world that we think um, will last forever. 
I have witnessed um, people from different social sectors in China, such as doctors, journalists, lawyers, volunteers, who reach out to relate to each other and to document voices that might be marginalized or suppressed. The public roles of museums or cultural institutions are extremely vulnerable in time of crisis. So after all this um, kind of practice of social distancing as what we are doing now, um, my question is how do we recreate the public role of museum and uh, cultural institutions and also the social meaning of art. And I really don't think online showroom is the answer. So I would really uh, like to discuss this with the Berlin audience. And I think this is someone we all have to face in the future and after the crisis. Excellent. On that note, let's thank Nikita again for her wonderful input. This is Times Art Center Berlin's online interview series during the COVID-19 pandemic. We're working from home to keep engaging with one another. At a time when the gravity and scale of things can feel overwhelming, let's keep focusing on the present, on important discourses, on caring for each other, and carrying on. Thank you for listening. Brought to you by Times Art Center Berlin, a nonprofit contemporary art space located in Berlin Mitte. Check out our website, timesartcenter.org, and social media, Times Art Center Berlin, to stay tuned. I wish you stay healthy and safe with your loved ones.